Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome back to another top level game of Professional StarCraft 2. It's time for a best of five series that was played a couple of days ago as this is the finals of this week's ESL Open Cup for the North American region. Now, it turns out this is going to be a game between some of my favorite North Americans. As in the top left-hand corner from the great state of France, we're looking at none other than Clem's main command center. And his opponent, playing here with the Blue Zerg drones from South Korea, we're looking at Dark's main base. Clem versus Dark. I mean, in case you're unfamiliar, there are three ESL Open Cups each week. There's one for the Asian region, one for the European region, and then also one for the Americas. And it turns out anybody can sign up from anywhere. It just simply determines, well, two things mainly. First off, the server that the games need to be played on. And secondly, also the time slot. So I decided to look this up. For Dark, apparently this particular series, this finals, was played at 11.30 a.m. Which doesn't really sound too bad, but there's a very good chance that he's been playing since round one that took place many, many hours before that. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if up to this point, Dark did not go to bed just yet. I don't really know exactly the pro gamer schedule, but I do know that it's pretty cursed for the vast majority of these guys. Clem, um, for him, this particular series was played at 3.30 a.m. <laughs> So we have Europe going up against Asia, and then we have the games being played on the North American region, where both players are very likely to be sleep deprived, although I do know for a fact that Clem in general does have a very messed up sleep schedule. I think he generally doesn't really start playing any games until like 4 p.m. at earliest, and that is considered quite soon for Mr. Clem. Is Dark doing it again? He is. Okay, so I actually really quite like that little safety measure that he just built in. So, it does two things. First off, it shows a little bit of respect to Clem's early game Reaper control. Secondly, however, upon confirming that there was no barracks in this area of the map, he decided to morph that drone into a really quick third base, skipping the early game gas geysers. So at this point, Clem, he did scout with an SCV, he confirmed that it was safe for the Reaper to go across. He's probably expecting a third base to go down shortly, but it's already been planted. Obviously, this does mean that, well, the link speed is nowhere to be seen just yet, and I'm not sure if Dark can pull off this build multiple times in a series. But against a normal early game, like the one we see right here from Mr. Clem, no triple Reaper shenanigans or anything like that, this particular start should be really, really good right here for the South Korean Zerk. That being said, I mean, already you could see a little bit of that Reaper control right here for Clem. 3.30 in the morning or not, he's still got to be able to control that Reaper really, really cleanly. He has now also seen the timing of that third base, and he must realize at this point, ooh, careful, that there is no gas. Up to this point, still a completely gasless opener right here for the Zerk. You'll probably be taking maybe even four. I think two at once, but he could even just save up all the way until he makes four of those gas geysers all at the exact same time. Alrighty, so a heavy macro game from the Zerk in game number one. And Clem, well, he's decided to go for a quick triple CC opener as well. Building the third command center before the starport. I'm a big fan of this build. I've already mentioned this many times before. I think it's really strong for Terrence to go for this particular start. Especially if you switch over the tech lab over here with that barracks. You put the starport on it and you pump out a couple benchies. This is one of these I don't want to die to anything stupid type of builds. Yeah, so we've seen Dark experiment with this build over the last couple of weeks. I've casted now a few series where he seems to do it in particular on Golden Aura. Um, there is a ledge here to jump into the main base. It's not like Terran couldn't scout it, but I guess this is just a map where he likes playing this particular build on. So he's decided to go for three gas geysers at the same time now on the back of this, together with a Roach Warren. So this is him skipping link speed entirely, I believe. He will maybe start it up in the mid game, but for now he's just gonna go for Roaches and Ravagers. And when you think about it, I mean, this is really the worst. Are we gonna shoot? <laughs> We're gonna shoot right there at the Reaper just to let the collateral damage of that flame get rid of the creep tumor there. Lovely little play, but when you think about it early on, I mean, it's really only going to be a couple of Hellions and then maybe a Reaper at worst. Could be Cyclones as well, which might be a little bit tedious, but Queens should be able to deal with that quite nicely. And after all of those drones, right, so we're already at 48 workers right now, adding on even more. After all of those drones, you can pump out some roaches and be safe against the larger groups of Terran units that are now going to be roaming the map. Yep, 
So this is a very strong economical start and not really something I've seen any of the other top level Zerg players mess around with. We should really see some spore crawlers though. So he doesn't know what he's playing against precisely. He hasn't really done any scouting. He's gonna see the Benshee right now. I believe he saw the Benshee. Benshee's gonna be forced to turn around. So I guess this is like a, a scouting group of roaches over here. But he is going to need some sort of anti-air at home and maybe some detection too, although he might wait until that lair is done and go for an overseer here instead. So four SCVs I think is the best CEO. Oh, five? Okay. Five SCVs here is what he can be aiming for at most. All right, there's the spores coming up. A lovely game here so far here by Dark. Playing a little bit greedy, cutting a few corners here and there, but we well, you know who Clem is, right? He's one of the strongest macro Terrans in the world. Some of the strongest micro Terrans in the world too, but he doesn't really cheese that much. I think you can get away with build orders like this more often than not. And yeah, in game number one, I don't think Dark could really hope for a much better start than the one that he's got here so far. Now, maybe these Benchies can finally get something done, though. Because up to this point... Yeah, we're gonna hit the unbuildable plates right there just a single time. Okay, up to this point, we haven't really seen a lot of damage. Aliens are thinking about it. Where did those roaches go? Okay, they were apparently hiding over at the fourth base. Two drones so far, four drones so far. Six drones. Benji's now heading on over towards the main base. Okay, this is starting to add up. Yep, those roaches were mispositioned, right? So the main advantage of having those speed links is that, well, even when you are caught with your pants down, and you have your army in the wrong position at the wrong time, you can quite easily get them back towards the location where you want them to go. With roaches though, especially when they don't have the glial reconstitution, the speed upgrade just, yeah, it just takes a while. It's just such a slow upgrade to actually get going. And Yeah, those roaches, they should have been here. They should have been protecting this base. Maybe split up like half of that pack over here and then half over here on the low ground. That would have been a whole lot better. And ultimately right here, well, that's 15 drones going down for just five Hellions. All right, 1-1 is going to finish up right now for Klim. Does he have any sort of momentum going? There's the armory, properly timed as well, so he can go straight into the 2-2 research. You'll love to see it. He's got a nice little medevac drop over here, right before the upgrades are done, but still putting on some pressure. This is also before any of those Zerg upgrades finish up. We do have a bingling nest here, but if I'm not mistaken, we don't have link speed. So link speed has not been started yet. It's a little bit awkward when you go for speed banes before speed links. It's technically an option, but not really something that we normally see in a game of StarCraft 2. Alright, we're gonna prioritize the plus one melee upgrade here. And then a carapace upgrade here too, so that's the second one. Which is interesting, so it's just really roaches and ravagers as a stepping stone. Yeah, and now ultimately we are gonna go down to links and banes. Both of them are gonna be able to get their speed upgrade here eventually. I don't hate it. This upgrade is actually a little late. Nothing all too terrible, though, because I don't think Zerk is really going to be too aggressive here. I mean, maybe he's going to test the waters a bit, but... I don't hate this move right here from Dark, but... I wonder if it would have been easier for him to transition towards... Maybe, like, Hydra Lurker, or maybe some Infestors instead. Because this kind of feels like a step down, going from Roach Ravager into Link Bane. Like, you bought all that time with that early game upgrade skip and now we're, we're still getting the upgrade anyways i mean i don't mind seeing it later on but i like the early game here for dark i don't necessarily love the follow-up although i'm sure he's been experimenting with this for a while longer than i have seen it and he's got good reason to make this step i yeah i'm just wondering if it's the most optimal one we do have a really quick hive by the way so vipers are already uh, coming up right now they're sitting in their cocoons getting the uh Blinding clouds down, maybe some uh, parasitic bombs as well on these metavex would certainly not be a bad idea. Most of the siege tanks are still sitting at home. That is not enough uh, Zerg here to really push this back, although apparently Clem is scared enough of it for now. Maybe mostly just creating a distraction here, yeah. Because he really wants to set up shop over here and now the majority of the army is coming across. This is before 2-2 is done, that's still a little while away. Ghost Academy coming up as well. Fourth Command Center is already finished. So that's going to be established as well. Alright. So can Clem get any sort of damage done with this big attack of his? I think this is... Somewhat mistimed. Just ever so slightly. Because with 2-2 done, this would be a hell of a lot scarier. Although, he's mostly just dodging the Zerg for now, right? He's not really fighting it with the majority of his army. 
Big Zerg counterattack, though, in the meantime. Terran reinforcements are getting rid of most of it. Planetary Fortress cancelled for now. But the Siege Tanks, okay, are getting a lot of work done. And you know what? What I thought was previously maybe a little bit mistimed. Turns out to be a brilliant timing right here for Clem. He finishes plus two infantry weapons here. Basically, as these units finally started engaging the main chunk right there of that Zerg army. Nice little bit of counter-attack damage, though. Ooh, Blinding Clouds completely catching the Terran player off guard. Okay, this will definitely be pushed back. Yeah, there's not enough Terran to really fight this properly, but... This is still an outstanding attack right here for Klim. Especially since he also dealt with all of those units at home relatively smoothly. Yeah, five siege tanks have gone down, but I think those are all the ones that were brought to the front. Nidus Worm into the main base. Ultralisk coming up here as well. Keep in mind that they are a little bit cheaper now with the new multiplayer balance patch. They're going to be able to get another kill in over here, okay? Nidus in the meantime inside of the main base is going to start unloading just the Zerklings one at a time, which takes forever. Yeah, those will also be cleaned up very nicely. Okay, so great offensive by Clem. And then at the same time also fantastic defensive play. This is not easy. The only thing that didn't really go great for him is that the fourth command center is pretty late, all things considered. But I mean, you can't have everything, right? When you're trying to micro multiple areas at once and you're trying to dodge those banelings, that was really well done right there by the Frenchman. Keep in mind, by the way, that these guys are also, like I said, playing on the American server. So they're playing this game with a good chunk of ping. I wouldn't be surprised if both of them have a ping of at least 180 or so. Probably right around that amount. So everything you do is going to be delayed by roughly 0.2 seconds. Which definitely benefits the Zerk more than it benefits the Terran. There's still a lot of burrowed Zerklings, by the way. Just set up everywhere. But yeah, Zer Zerk, generally speaking, is a little bit more reactionary with their Banelings. And Terran has to be proactive with picking up their units and making sure that they're split and all that. Otherwise, stuff like this happens. That wasn't really a disaster. Don't really love the split over here at all, or the non-existent split. That's because, we, uh, that's because we're microing on the other side of the map as well. A lot of the Metavex do end up taking damage, but luckily for them, they have a hit point pool of 150, and Parasitic Bomb deals 120 damage, which is, by the way, a ton. I don't think a lot of people, just just as a little bit of information, I don't think a lot of people realize how much damage Parasitic Bomb actually deals. So obviously it only affects air units. But Parabomb is 120 damage, and Sonic Storm is 80. I did not realize that for years. It's 120 damage for a Parasitic Bomb versus 100, or sorry, versus only 80. There's no 100 in that sentence. Uh, versus only 80 from Psystorm. Now obviously, the fact that it's, oh, Really? So the Nidus Worm is no longer working out, so we're gonna go for a quadruple drop instead? There's a little bit of overlap over here, Mr. Dark. We don't even have enough... Hmm. We don't even have enough Zerklings right here to properly load all of this in. Anyways. Clem taking a bit of a breather here for a couple minutes, though. And I wonder if maybe that's gonna bite him in the butt a little bit. There's the Zerkling drop heading on over towards the main base of the Terran. Speaking of which, though, he did find that base over here in the bottom left-hand corner. Some more parasitic bombs trying to get rid of whatever medevac they can. Here's that Overlord drop. <laughs> Overlord drop together with a Nidus Worm. Yeah, there's definitely some overlap there. Getting these upgrades cancelled is massive. Alright, that's a lot of time that Clem is gonna have to now spend once again getting those upgrades going. And even though Dark is fighting a small uphill battle, it's just a little hill, you know? It's not its not really a mountain he has to climb at this point. Good pull right there on the SCVs, though. Sneaking them away before those Banelings can really get close. Ultra over here, dealing with that little Metavec drop in the bottom left-hand corner against pure Marine-based armies. Ultras are really, really powerful, but... Of course, we do have the Ghost now coming up, and the Ghost is a fantastic tool. Personal Cloaking coming up, which, by the way, is the laziest icon in all of StarCraft 2. You wanna see why? Look at this upgrade. That's the Banshee Cloaking upgrade. Compare the two. They use the same freaking thing. Maybe it's the same technology, but then shouldn't they have it? Like if one of the, I don't know, man. I kind of feel like that was a placeholder when Blizzard first made the game back in 2008 or whatever. And they just never, <laughs> they just never updated his icons. Doesn't really matter. 
Okay, nice move right here by Dark, but also a pretty expensive one. But I like the fact that he, he could have done that like two minutes ago, but it would have been very pricey. I like that he decided to wait until he had a bit of a bank. I think that's the right move to make. We have like 80 drones, and you have like 5,000 resources in the bank. I think that's roughly the time where you can start thinking about blowing up a planetary fortress. If you do it any earlier than that, you may find yourself flat broke, because... That is still not a particularly cost-efficient trait for our Zerg player. Banelings right now coming in from the back. Careful, Mr. Clem. He sees it, he picks up, and he boosts away. That was almost a disaster. And again, Zerglings are still being picked up and microed over here inside of the main base. Not really even dealing that much damage, but it's... It's creating another point of contest, right? Like, that's the tricky part here. It may very well be that Clem at some point is looking inside of the main base, dealing with two Zorklings, right? What are they really going to achieve? And then at the same time, while he's got a screen in the main base, his entire bio army could be overwhelmed here by Lings and Banes. All right, once again, Dark moving forward over here. Parasitic Bomb once again on the Metavex. Can we see a split? We're gonna see splits here eventually, but this is, again, very pricey. <sighs> Wonderful bit of aggression here. That final snipe there did get rid of the Ultra at the very least. 25 SCVs have gone down here though. Dark, you need some more Larva it looks like. Okay, yeah, maybe you can remax with more Ultras or something like that. He's gonna continue rolling forward, getting dangerously close to the planetary and he blows up another one. Whew, this one also ended up burning down. That's the Orbital Command. So ultimately, very cost inefficient traits for Dark, but not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Honestly, up to this point, he's really only lost like 3,000 more minerals, which is nothing all too crazy. Yeah, so he's spending his final larva here on just remaxing ASAP. So this is what I would do, and I find myself with 20 Ultralisks. Not ideal. Seven Ultras, I think, is a lot more manageable. They take a while to produce, but once they are out, I've got a feeling that there's really no way that Clem is going to be able to stop them. I mean... Yeah, he's got six ghosts, but that's not enough. Liberators, I guess, are nice as well, but with some nice biles, like those. All right, he can get rid of them. Zirkling counterattack once again on the other side of the map. Maybe a bit of an old army hotkey. Liberator here going to town as well, going after the gold base. Queens have been pushed to the front as well. Did that guy just bile himself? I'm not exactly sure. No, I think that's the animation for the Liberator getting the final hit in. All right, Dark is smelling blood in the water right now. This has been a very action-packed game number one. Both players have had their foot on the gas for a long time. Oh, we're gonna abduct those uh, those liberators just to force them to unsiege. Okay, Ultra does not get the little swipe off with its massive mandibles there at the front. Banelings, however, may very well be able to finish the job. And indeed, it is going to be enough. Dark wins game number one. Okay, next up, we find ourselves on the map Oceanborn, and as expected, Clem decides to go for a double barracks opener this time around. Once again, Dark is checking around, and I think he's gonna go for a super quick third hatchery once again, before making any sort of gas. Now, how in the world is he going to deal with Clem's Reapers if he is not going to have Zirkling speed anytime soon? Because that's normally your saving grace, right? Like, obviously the third hatchery will be further along, so it will have more hit points. I don't think this is really something that Clem can just kill with his Reapers. And I guess it's going to allow him to pump out an extra queen as well, but I was wondering about this particular situation, and apparently so is Clem. Is West right? Ah. Um, they're talking about the particular server that... They're playing games on. Um, when it is Europe going up against Korea... Dark doesn't believe it. When it is Europe going up against Korea, generally speaking, the games will alternate between NA Central and NA West. So West is supposed to be a little bit better for one of the players, and East obviously is supposed to be a little bit better for the Europeans in this particular case. Anyways, usually to make it as fair as possible, not only do they play all the games on the NA server, but they will also make it... Uh, Alternate to go to the best server. Well, taking turns at the very least for each of the two. Okay. Maybe this is not as bad as I thought it was going to be, though. Yeah, maybe the triple reaper start is not really that great. Huh. Dark may honestly be onto something with this particular start. Because Clem was apparently thinking the same thing. It's like, yeah, maybe you're fine now, but what if I did go for a really quick third? So, normally you're out against this particular opener from ooh, the Terran 
is getting that link speed going. But I guess what we have going now instead is just three queens coming up all at once. And as long as the queens can cover for each other... I mean, very soon there will be five queens out. That's not going to be enough at all for the Terran player to... Uh... Yeah, I mean, he, he can't do anything against five queens. That's not really... He's even gonna go straight into the sixth one as well. So, Dark basically just skipping all gas production. So normally... Why this is interesting to me. Normally, if you want to go for straight queen production, you do have to cut a few drones here and there. Right? So if you want to produce out of every single hatchery all of the time, so right now he's cutting it a little bit. This is much quicker, by the way, isn't it? Uh, maybe not, actually. Normally, when you do want to go straight into that mass queen production, you will have to cut drone production here, too. But it seems like Dark has been able to spend pretty much all of his larva and make a whole lot of queens at the same time. Because he's not mining any gas. He's not spending any of his resources or any of his potential income on any sort of gas upgrades. Anyways, triple gas right now on the back of this. A Roach Warren once again. We did not yet saturate that one in the main base, which is a little bit sloppy, actually. Hmm. Obviously, the queen control has to be on point. So now it's Hellions together with Cyclones. Or, sorry, Reapers together with Cyclones. Rather than one Reaper together with Hellions. Different unit composition, but very similar setup for the Terran, all things considered. So we do have Stimpak on the back of this. This is not going to be like a very... It's actually a 2-1-1. That's so cool. So this is a 2-1-1 with just a round of Cyclones and then a couple of Hellions being produced. But ultimately, this is going to lead towards a Marine drop with, I believe, two Medifacts. I love how in 13 years of StarCraft, relatively small changes to the early game can change the dynamics entirely. Right? It's kind of beautiful. This game has been around for such a long time, you'd imagine that we have figured it all out. But this really looks like a mech-based opener. But it's a bio transition where right now two medevacs are coming out. Normally, if you go straight bio here as Terran, you want to go for like a 16 marine drop. So a standard 2-1-1, what we used to see for years. This is like a weird variation of that theme. Normally, you would hit right about right now with Stimpak, two Medivacs, and 16 Marines on the other side of the map. Obviously, okay, now we're going to YOLO in the Hellions. I mean, that worked, out, that worked out quite well in the first game of this series. Oh my god, so many in red hit points. Yeah, the drones themselves are going to turn around and fight. Okay. I think this is okay. Yeah, normally I wouldn't... Uh, <laughs> Six drones is not horrible. Obviously, it wasn't great either, but those Hellions and that Reaper group, it would fall off pretty hard anyways. Here's the Marine drop coming up. So, all things considered, it's about a minute delayed. But then with all of those additional units in the mix instead. Hmm. What is interesting, though, is that ultimately, all of these different varieties, if the players are good enough, even though some of these builds may be somewhat suboptimal, they can throw a bit of a curveball at the opponent. Ultimately, it leads towards a pretty standard mid game. These guys are trying so hard to be fancy. They're trying so hard to trick the opponent, and ultimately, you just end up with a pretty normal mid game. This is also a third command center, of course, in the mix. So it's a very different opener than the standard 2 1 1, but. They're like, what if I do this against you instead of this? And then ultimately the opponent deflects it. And... I guess it also shows real skill right here though from both of these players, right? Because this is something you can practice. But since there are so many different flavors of early game for both sides that it's difficult that you even run into the same build order twice, right? Because these guys are mixing it up so much that there's a good chance that they are playing some of these builds for the very first time. They just kind of know that all of the uh, routes eventually lead towards 1-1 one -one upgrades with Stimpak and Combat Shields, right? They kind of just know where it all goes eventually, that they're just moving with the flow. So rather than treating the game like an Excel spreadsheet, they're trying to uh, trick the opponent. And ultimately, yeah, can we consider Dark tricked? Not really. He does have an awful lot of units. Yeah, so this is a different follow-up from him. So now we have Roach Speed exclusively. So no Link Speed, no Bailing Speed, none of that. And 1-1 one, one upgrades. So Dark is gonna go for the full Sledgehammer attack. This is one of the most classic Zork timing attacks. And the one that we have seen for, well, ever as... Uh, for, for however long this game has been around for. This is a very scary push right now from Dark. 
and it needs to deal damage. If it doesn't deal damage, he's gonna find himself pretty far behind. But look at the supply count. That wasn't even the entire Zerk army just yet. We have a couple Roaches and Ravagers coming in as well from the bottom of this ramp over here. Only two SCVs have gone down though. Brilliant control here by Clem so far, even pushing through the corrosive biles to try and snipe a couple of those Ravagers. Reinforcing Roaches are also showing up. 17 more Roaches on the back it is here. Ay -ay 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 -ay. Only four SCVs. Only four SCVs up to this point. Clem is an absolute madman. Now, this is not over yet. He's not out of the water, but... <sighs> that was glorious, Clem. So, he's got 2-2 two -two on the back of this before the opponent's upgrades. And now we see Dark making that pivot away from Roach Ravager into what will probably be Ling Bane again. But it's gonna be a while. Yeah, there's the Ling upgrade coming up. We'll probably see a Baneling Nest here before too long. Sure, the armies were traded out, but I think Clem is A-OK -okay with that. Clem will probably try... Well, get some value over here, but he'll probably try and get a big attack going as soon as 2-2 is done. And economically speaking, he didn't really take much of a hit. So, he does have four orbital commands here as well, so that fourth orbital is gonna be amazing. This might be an overextension. Clem, hello? Yeah, a little late right there on the reaction. So, that fourth orbital command just makes this game so much better here for Clem, because not only did he not really lose a whole lot of workers during all of that, he's now actually gonna find himself with a small economical lead against the Zerg player who's stuck at, like, yeah, maybe early mid-game tech? So Dark's trying to resolve this, though. So he keeps dancing over here. He's now going into a Hive together with a Hydralisk then. So there's no Baneling Nest. Instead, he's just going straight into a Hydra then. He'll probably go, I guess... Wait, he cancelled plus one melee. He did have plus one melee going for a while, didn't he? Or am I completely crazy? Yeah, no, I definitely saw plus one melee there. Unless I'm hallucinating. I don't think I am. If I am, uh, tell me I need to go see a doctor in the comment section. Um, that's good for the, uh, you know, the algorithm. Just actually, just tell me, you can just tell me that regardless. I'll be okay with that. Um, no, but seriously, this is Dark shifting gears once again. Maybe he wants his opponent to think that this is a good move as well. But I think this is the right thing to do. So go into Hydras together with Lurkers here instead. This dance, by the way, has been going on for ages. Oh, Dark once again. Finding himself in one of these scenarios, man. He is so aggressive with these armies. I see this go wrong for so many Zork players out there, but he's actually starting to clean up. Some of the important units. That being said, though, that Roach buffer that was in front of those Ravagers is now mostly gone. Siege Tanks here in the back is an overextension. Yeah. Siege Tanks here in the back, Liberator at the front. It is not really something that he can easily deal with. I thought for a second maybe Dark is doing this because he wants to trade out his Roach Ravager army for higher tier units. But then he, well, started producing more Roaches once again. A little bit of counter-attack damage there, maybe from Clem as well, but nothing all too significant. Alright, 4th CC comes up. 3-3, three, three, coming up here as well for Clem. Clem's looking really good here. I mean, game number one went in favor of Dark, but I actually think I kind of like the way that Clem was playing the mid-game better. It's just that Dark sort of jumped on a trampoline, right? With that build order that he decided to go for, and he just skyrocketed into a phenomenal position. Nice snipe right here on the hatch. Sorry about that, Mr. Marauder. Sorry. I wasn't sorry. My main concern right here for Clem, though, is that he does not have an answer against Lurkers. Other than just pushing through and splitting, which is something that these top Terrans do every once in a while, he doesn't really have anything great against Lurker play right now. Uh, do we have a Ghost Academy yet? We do not. Without it, Okay, there it is. Without a Ghost Academy, it's going to be really tough to get much done. Now, Marine Marauder, we've seen Bjorn do this many times. And I would say that Clem's Micro is probably at about the same level as Bjorn's. We do see them pushing through every once in a while, but you need overwhelming forces for that. Okay. Seismic Spines is done. Adaptive Talents coming up as well. So those are the two Lurker upgrades that make them incredibly formidable. But look at the upgrades differences, though. So Dark has been spending a lot of his resources into tech and all that. Yeah, the 3-3 research here for Clem is gonna hit like a truck, assuming he will actually be able to make use of it. Oftentimes, lurkers buy so much time that it's difficult for... 
yeah, those Terran units to, to properly engage. Hello, Mr. Marauder Man. Alright, this is the first time he sees the spines of the Lurkers. The Vipers are already ready as well. That's the first abduction. Medevac, not what we were aiming for. I think we were fishing right there for one of those siege tanks. There we go. There we go. Beautiful stuff here by Dark. So despite the fact that he's got the supply disadvantage, despite the fact that he was stuck on an early mid-game army earlier, he's been putting all of his eggs in this tech basket over the last few minutes while battling his his opponent with a low-tier army here instead. Oh my god, he decides to do it. Nah, dude, that wasn't it. That was not it. Clem decided to uh, pull up Bjorn right there and push through, but uh, that went horrible for him. He just lost so many of his troops. I mean, he's still trying. It's just that this Zerk army is improving, and I'm not really a huge fan of this Terran force here. Lovely abductions, man. Putting in so much work. It's such a tiny Zerk army, though. Couple more lurkers here, hiding close to the mineral line. They want to be joining in. Okay, that's one Viper. A little bit overextending, and it immediately gets sniped. Speaking of snipes, though, ghosts are coming up. There may actually already be one or two. Yeah, there's already one over here in the mix. Just for EMP, I guess it's kind of nice, but at this point, all of those Vipers have already disappeared. Because I'm thinking about going around the site, maybe moving into the natural? Overly ambitious lurker here. That's a children's book I want to write one day. Overly ambitious lurker. <laughs> Anyways. Ooh. I'm still finding himself in this scenario, man. Okay, but Dark has had enough. Yeah, I love this move here from Dark. Sending the counterattack in. It's clear that Clem is having a lot of trouble trying to engage this army on creep. What about off creep? Well, it turns out it's a little bit better. Yeah, I don't think he's going to really be able to achieve too much. But it is now forcing that entire Terran army to go back home. One random little widow mine to set up over there, too. Not a bad idea. Getting quite a bit of damage done here. Clem, though, finding himself with an over uh, overwhelming supply advantage right now. So he's been macroing like an absolute champ. All of these trades we've been seeing have been very cost-efficient for him. So despite the fact that his economy has been mostly the same of that of the Zerg... Yeah, he's been able to just muster up more units because of all these crazy fights that he's been doing over the last few minutes. Maybe that initial engagement at the Lurkers wasn't great, but I also don't think what Dark has been doing here, fighting off creep, is that good. And apparently he agrees with me. He sees all of those additional command centers that are coming up and he realizes... This is not gonna happen. Site Delta is gonna be our third game in this best of five series. Now these two seem to be very evenly matched. So I've got a feeling I'm gonna be here for a little while longer, guys. I hope you don't mind. I feel like I've been mostly uploading like 20-ish minute long videos this week. I think this one is already, at this point, probably like half an hour long. And we're only in game number three of a best of five. Neither of these two players, despite the fact that they have been probably up all night. Yeah, neither of these two players seems to care that much to, uh, go the distance, huh? Apparently that's not really much of a problem. Anyhow. Third command center, once again here by Clem. Happy to play the macro game every single time. Just a single Reaper opener this time around, and we do have a standard build here this time as well from Mr. Dark, so there is a third hatch, but it's later than the previous ones. And he's gonna be able to go for the spawning pool upgrade here as well, so... Metabolic boost coming up right now at the appropriate time. Can we make another Hellion? There we go. Two Hellions is usually what you're aiming for. Third command center, of course, is going to be followed up eventually by a starport. We'll probably see a tech lab. There we go. And then some Benchy playing. All right. So this is the type of game that Clem wants to play day in and day out. This is what he, what he plays Terran vs. Zerg for. This is his comfort zone. This is what he loves to do. Dark, clearly a little bit more wishy-washy, I guess. Is that a good term? I don't know. I've never used it in a cast before, but he's a little bit more random when it comes to his early game build order choices. Sometimes a little bit more rigid, sometimes a little bit less so. This is something that Clem has done in an identical way, like we're seeing him do it right here, literally thousands of times. Benchy, getting their speed upgrade, or... Cloak upgrade, rather. Maybe I'll get their speed upgrade, too. I would love to see it, but... Alright, how much damage can Clem really deal right here with all of these units that he's been, well, producing? 
My feeling is that he's not going to be able to do too much. He's been moving around these Hellions in quite an aggressive way in the previous two games, but I think that was a response to seeing what Dark was doing. If he gets the opportunity, sure, he'll do it again, but I think he's probably going to... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I've, I threw my mouse away. Um, I, <laughs> I got a new mouse a couple days ago. I'm still getting used to it. Anyways, um, you know, you know the craziest thing about the new mouse I'm using? I now have a wireless mouse with a wired mouse pad. <laughs> How the times have changed. I used to have a wired mouse and a wireless mouse pad. Wireless mouse pad? That's cursed. Oh no, this is a bad idea, Clem. I don't think you can do it. Okay. Yeah, I got one of those mouse pads now that like wirelessly charges the mouse. So the mouse is on top of the mouse pad and then the mouse pad charges the mouse. Anyways, works like a charm so far, but it does take a little bit of getting used to. In case you're interested, there's a, a link to my exact setup. I have a setup page on my website. There's a link to my exact setup down below in the description of every video. Not just this one, every single one of them. It's right below, if you scroll down just a little bit, right below the like button. You see that like button? Yeah, click that one. And then you can open the description box and... Yeah, 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 there, there it is, right below the like... Yeah, there it is. Benchy, go out of town over on the other side of the map. But I did have to giggle a little bit though when I realized I was plugging in a mouse pad and I'm running a wireless mouse. <laughs> That's just so cursed. Can he get the kill with Hellions and a Reaper? Oh, he did! Lovely, Mr. Clem. Very good. Dark also a bit late right there on his plus one armor upgrade. Oh, this is much better. Yeah, you can see that this is Clem's comfort zone. I mean, only getting a single worker kill so far, but this is still that that start you're looking for, right? As a, as a Terran player, like you wanna, obviously I'm not paying super close attention to the exact macro that he's doing in the meantime on the back of this, but this is the type of start that you're aiming for. The cleaner, the better. Second factory coming up. We can go for the drilling claws upgrade. Dark mixing it up once again, though, going into a little bit of Hydraling Bane this time around. So Clem is going into a Bio Mine army. Hydras do technically outrange the Widow Mines. It's just that with the new multiplayer balance patch, I'm not a huge fan of Hydraling Bane. I mean, I, I'm a little conflicted. It's just that Banelings in general just don't pack quite the punch. And I don't think the small improvements to the Hydra really make up to it, or up for it, rather, but. Only time will tell. Did we forget Stimpak? Or did, sorry, did we forget Combat Shields again? Ah. It's like he hurt me from the past. This was played a few days ago, but... Thank you, Clem. Appreciate that. Oh. Okay. That was a strange little engagement right there. A little bit of an overshot on both sides, it seems, but... Anyways, all of those early game harassment tools have been repaired up. Other than this... Well... The Benshi could be up to 140 health. It's 100, I guess 107 is fine. Fourth Command Center coming up. Drilling Claws researching in the main base. Can we get 2-2 two, two started as well, please? No? Okay. Hellbat attack here in the meantime, though, on the other side of the map. Using those repaired Hellions once again. I'm actually getting a little concerned right here for the upgrades. It's one of those scenarios that Clem may have very well clicked them already, but he just didn't start them up because he didn't have the money for it, and he's not gonna recheck until- Oh, ho, ho, ho! sorry. That Widow Mine betrayed the entire Terran army. I'll shut up about whatever I was talking about. I want to just witness that in all its glory once again. Sorry. I, I'm a Zerk player at heart. This one, this one, this one over here. <laughs> oh my god. 12 confirmed kill, I, uh, or kills rather. I think that's about nine confirmed Terran murders right right over there. Ay, yeah, yeah. How does it feel now, Terran players? Yeah, it's not so fun, eh? When your army gets blown up by the Widow Mine. Anyways, still not a bad situation here though for Clem, and he does fire up 2 2 right now. Dark pretty late as well on the plus two carapace. Eh. This game is uh, actively more sloppy, though, as far as the base mechanics go, compared to some of the previous ones. Now, I love this lineup over here with Drilling Claws. The Speedy Drilly upgrade. Also now the Speedy Undrilly upgrade with the new multiplayer patch. They now unburrow a little bit quicker, too. 
But ultimately, these two at least will be cleaned up. Hive coming up here, plus two armor now starts up as well. Maybe the sleep deprivation is kicking in. I mean, there is a chance, I guess, that Dark did sleep before starting this tournament. Looks like the Widow Mine somehow managed to get more damage in over there. But I don't think so. Like, that would probably mean you would have to go to bed at, like, 8. I mean, he could, but I don't think so. Knowing a lot of programmers, I don't believe it. Anyways. Yeah? Okay. Hmm. All of these fights, they don't look particularly great for the Terran. But they're not awful, right? It's not like he's completely all in here. This is not a three base, eight Rex type of situation here for Clem. He is constantly adding on more and more economy. Now the fourth command center is going to be able to grow a planetary fortress hat. It's going to look good on him. Ooh, that micro forward was kind of dangerous. Yeah, I think actually that was a bit of a mistake. Now the Hydra count though is getting to a point where the Hydras are yeah, able to kill most of those Widow Mines pretty easily. I wouldn't mind seeing Clem maybe pivot into Siege Tanks instead, but for now we're not going to do that. Instead we're going to go into the Lips once more. Ghost Academy coming up on the back of this. Adrenal Glance, plus three melee, plus two armor. And some Vipers for our Zerg. One cheeky little Widow Mine in a plane. Another children's book that I want to write. I don't remember the first one. Cheeky little lurker. Over overexcited lurker. I don't remember the name of the first book. This will be the sequel though. One lonely widow mine. <sighs> we can definitely write StarCraft poetry at the very least. Maybe a full book is a little tricky, but. Another hatchery. We'll bite the dust over here down south. And even though Dark is not, like, in an awful position here, he has been... He has been beaten a couple times here already, right? In a lot of those engagements. It's just that the, the late-game army of Zerg doesn't impress me as much as the Terran. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Um, I, yeah, where are you going to go from here, right? So the Terran is improving their army with Ghosts and Liberators and all the rest of it. Zork is just kind of playing more of the same with Vipers for support now, which, don't get me wrong, is a banger of a unicorn, but... There's no lurkers on the horizon, no brute lords, no ultras, no infestors, none of that. Apparently, Mr. Dark believes Hydroning Bane Viper is going to be enough. And maybe he's right, but I'm not sold on it. Wait, am I? Okay. Bio army over here on the left as well. Widow mines. There's one more. Widow Mines are such a ridiculous unit, man. They have been the main point of debate in the StarCraft community over the last couple of months. They did the smallest little nerf. Or sorry, the smallest little buff, rather, to the Widow Mine. And I think a lot of people were like, yo, maybe it's not too crazy, but it is a little bit tone deaf. Like, what are we doing right now? Why are we buffing the Widow Mine of all units? Well... A lot of people have been talking about it, uh, not necessarily in the most positive way. You know what? I will say, I don't like the Widow Mine as a unit very much, personally. Especially as a player. But as a viewer and as a commentator, it is kind of sexy sometimes. To see those units dealing a ton of damage to the Zerg, but then also at the same time dealing a ton of damage to the Terran. Anyways, loads of SCVs are starting to fall, though. Yeah, many of those... Oh, that's the Baneling group? Sorry, I missed that one entirely. Yeah, that's the Baneling group over here. I thought Clem had spotted those, but that's not the case. He moves up towards the high ground here, and that's where all of those SCV kills were dealt. Yeah, I think StarCraft has a little too much splash damage overall. But as a viewer, it is very, well, explosive to watch, right? And definitely a very exciting moment whenever we see those units getting blown up. Maybe a little bit frustrating too, though, as a viewer from time to time, but... If you're not biased to watch either Zerk, Protals, or Terran... The explosives and the fireworks, they go hand in hand. Good EMP right there on that, uh, on that ghost. 
Oh, and Dark once again knocking at the front door over here. Dark may just be able to overwhelm this Terran army, to be honest. Suddenly, he finds himself knocking at the main base of the Terran player, blowing up so many units. There is a small counterattack here from Clem, but look at the reinforcements. There are tons of Zerklings and Hydras showing up on the other side of the map. Dark may have done something just now that I did not expect him to be able to do. Although, this is still a little bit risky, though. Yeah, the Terran army here is backing off. There's a lot more units popping out of those production machines as well. This little force here is dealing quite a bit of damage. And, well, it's killing drones, it's killing upgrades. Dark once again tries to force himself up to the high ground. Widow mine. Almost killing a lot of friendlies there too. Large amount of banelings though have just finished up here. Is he going to be able to break the main base? This is Clem's final stand here. He needs to hold this location. He cannot afford losing this. Despite the fact that he was in a phenomenal spot earlier, now he has lost 41 workers. Dark just completely flipped the switch there, right? I actually thought that we were watching a Zerg with a very slow death animation, because that's what it looked like. And maybe Dark thought the same thing as well, right? So, Dark has played a lot of games from this particular spot before, and I think he looked at this, he's like, you know what, if we keep playing like this, and we keep just sort of battling a little bit here, battling a little bit there, ultimately, I'm gonna get destroyed by Clem. So I need to put all of my eggs in one basket, I need to go for what is essentially an all-in, and I will try and go straight for the throat. And he punched him in the neck there, like that was kind of nuts. Clem is recovering though. You can see that right now in the supply count. Just a minute or two ago, he was very far behind. I think the banelings over there may have been spotted because no big losses on the side of the Terran as far as the supply count goes, it seems, but... Yeah, Dark decided to just make a move straight through the center of the map towards the natural expansion, took down the base over here, killed the SCVs left, right, and center creating loads of chaos and ultimately allowing himself right now to have a much surer way of playing this game. Still not a great position for him, but I like this one better than before. It really started with that little Overlord drop though, those Overlord drops actually are creating so much chaos for the Terran. Maybe in isolation, they're not very cost efficient, but because they're forcing the, uh, the Terran now to pay attention to another area, where the Zerk is just sort of hitting him a little bit, right? That's 13 SCVs once again down the drain. Going after the, the supply depot with the little hat on it. Brilliant stuff. Good splits here as well. APM wise, yeah, you can see that Dark is a little bit quicker overall. 480 average actions per minute versus 417-ish. That still means that Clem is playing a ridiculously fast game though. More Zerklings burrowed left, right and center. Terran army is leaving the main base alone again, and the Overlord's going back in to drop some more pesky little Zorklings. Man, if he had some burrowed bailings over here, that could have been... That could have been amazing. In the meantime, we did have the planetary fortress taken in the top left, and we have one little widow mine also wandering all the way towards the bottom left to see if there's any mining going on in that location. Okay. Widow Mine getting some damage done, but ultimately a lot of heavy tech units there from the Terran have once again been destroyed. 160 supply dead even there for at least when I started that sentence. Kind of insane, right? Considering this has been a 17 minute long skirmish now. I think, I think that YOLO move there from dark through the center of the map into the natural evened up the game more so than anything. It really just shows us how strong Clem is as a defensive player as well. I think a lot of people see him as like an aggressive Terran with phenomenal micro, but I think that was an excellent example of what the man is capable of when he's forced to defend at home instead. I really think actually that's something Clem has been improving over the last couple of years. He definitely wasn't quite that strong defensively as we're seeing him play in this series here so far. Yeah. If it wasn't for that move, I think Clem would have already won this game. More traitor mines. If it wasn't for that move... Oh, oh, I mean, fungal, fungal! Oh, big fungal. Massive fungal. This is the first time he sees any infestors in this match. That is painful. Uh, still, most of the meta effects got out, at least. Yeah, I think it mostly just evened up the game a little bit. Fight over here. Not quite optimal. 
Planetary Fort is in the top right. It's gotta be an expensive one. If you do decide to blow it up here, Mr. Uh, Dark, I mean, right now we're too committed. It does end up going down, but do we have more command centers to replace it with? I mean, there are more CCs, but they're also in trouble. A little further south. So much action, man. These guys are actually so evenly matched, it's insane. Whew, I figured Clem vs. Dark would be a good series, but I'm very glad I decided to open up this replay here, or this replay group here today. Kind of amazing. Okay. Despite the fact that Dark has had a lot more bases here for quite a long time, Clem has done an excellent job. Denying a lot of the mining. So if we look right here at the income advantage, look at that. Absolute roller coaster. Yeah, ultimately Dark now finds himself in a better spot, but that's mostly because of that base in the top right that just got destroyed. Loads of SCVs there ended up going down. Those burrowed Zorklings once again managed to get some damage done as well. And that's another nine SCVs, I think. Nah, eight SCVs are going down the drain. In the meantime, though, one of the Zork bases will be denied on the other side of the map. Clem wants to go after some of the uh, the drones here before ultimately, well, killing the hatch as well. Six Vipers coming up, by the way, here for Dark. That's a lot. That's most of his gas now spent on it, but this is not really a game where Clem can afford a ton of ghosts. So I think it does make sense, assuming the Vipers don't clump up all too much. Look at the supply counts, though. It's so insane. Now, 20 minutes in, neither player really with a significant advantage. Lurker then, coming up here for Dark. Clem moving forward to watch another newly acquired base. The one in the bottom left-hand corner coming up as well. We have now... Multiple Infestors. Looks like that was a kill, by the way, on that base. Oh, I don't think Clem realizes how close he was to walking into a trap there, but... Does manage to get away. This base actually going down, getting a kill on it, is quite significant. Base is in the top right-hand corner. Reacquired. Yep. And every single time this graph now updates, I think it's gonna be a little bit better for Clem overall, just because of those mules. Not by much, but... It'll be mostly even. Another command center coming up, though. Okay. So what are we going to use the command center for? Where are we going to place it? I guess over here is the most likely next choice. Beautiful engagements here once again, though. Dark cleans up some of those units. I guess one of the problems here for Clem is that his bases are spread out so far apart. So he needs to protect the bases in the top right. That's where the majority of his economy is at. But at the same time, he also wants to put pressure on the bottom left. And this map is big. That's another kill, though, on another hatch. This is starting to add up. Yeah. A little bit more gas actually lost by the Terran player so far throughout this match. Uh, I can imagine that is mostly due... Oh, Infester, Fungal, big Fungal, big Fungal, beautiful Fungal. Whew. Well, maybe a little over-eager, though. Probably should have fungled with that second one ever so slightly later. Can we do a scan? Yep. Anyways, it's difficult right here for... Oh, another fungal? ay 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 It's difficult for Terran to control both sides of the map. We have one cheeky little lurker now set up over there as well. Seismic Spines is done. Adaptive Talents is coming up. Liberators are really the only option, apparently, that Clem can see for now. I wouldn't mind seeing him add on another couple of rounds of ghosts. Yeah, the Liberators did take care of that one Lurker up north. Oh, good snipes. Getting both of those Vipers is massive. The last parasitic bombs over there. There's still six Vipers out, though. God, these units are kind of nuts. Probably the best spellcasters in the game. Other than maybe the Queen. Although some people don't consider the Queen a spellcaster. It kind of depends on what you consider a spellcaster. Technically speaking, a Widow Mine is a spellcaster too, but... I don't think I consider it one. Anyhow, Vipers are kind of amazing. Honestly, the Zerg spellcasters are all really strong. 
It's just hard to control them all at the same time. There's another parasitic bomb coming up. All right. Two Metavex, three Metavex going down. Another command center? Well, burning at least. Lurkers suddenly though, yeah, appearing in this game. And it's so difficult to deal with lurkers when you don't have the right tools. Right now, look at the lurkers here, cutting them off. Okay, what apparently Clemens decided to do is go for the counterattack, it seems. That main base though, that was one of the points of contest earlier in this match, is now once again moving forward. Widowmine there. Okay, Bio at least ran away before that Widowmine could really get a lot of damage done. That Bio army in the meantime on the other side of the map is now taking care of 17 drones. More and more are starting to fall. Just the Widow Mines and everything else set up over here too. I don't think that that base over there is going to be too far behind. Clem does have a couple of Cloak units here, but sadly for him, there's also... Okay, there's also an Overseer brought with this force. Dark's going to be retreating with a lot of his units, but not with everything. We see a liftoff on the barracks. This hatchery is certainly going to be dead. Dude, this is a banger of a series. Oh my god. These two are so evenly matched. Ultimately, though, Clem is going to have to address Dark's arm. And at this point, he does not have a proper answer against Lurkers at all. Now, the Lurkers are on the wrong side of the map. But it looks like there's nothing here to go and pick them up. I wouldn't have minded seeing maybe some of this army retreat back home to try and snipe a couple of those Lurkers. But anyways, yeah, there's not enough army for that available, I suppose. Those barracks are leaving the main base behind and they're ready to start firing away at whatever they can find right now. And the Planetary Fortress, I mean, maybe Banelings aren't as good as they once were, but the Lurker is still an excellent choice when it comes to dealing with those big, heavy Terran structures. There's not enough. Clem doesn't have the army. He only really has two bases worth of mining, and that's why he's establishing all of his infrastructure over here in the top right-hand corner, but... Not a whole lot can be done about this massive Zerg force. I mean, I say massive, Dark doesn't have a ton of income either, right? It's only, ooh, it's only 45 workers. He has once again grabbed the economical advantage. 23 SCVs have gone down. Yeah, GG. Brilliant game here by both players, but I am very impressed by Dark. How many, seriously though, how many games have I casted where Clem slowly suffocates the opponent after that early game that he had? And Dark basically decided to just flip the switch entirely there. Okay, our fourth map. It's Heart Lead. Reaper opener once again by Clem. Hatch gas pool once again by Dark, so he's gonna be able to get that link speed going nice and early and he will be sneaking out of third base here as well while he's trying to desperately deal with this very first Reaper, getting one kill, okay. Maybe a second kill would not be too bad. Yep. He's so, he's so good with that Reaper control. Rarely uses, or sorry, rarely loses it rather and Pretty much always gets some sort of damage done as well in the meantime, on the other side of the map. There's not a lot of games where Clem doesn't get a single Zerkling kill with his first Reaper. Do you think it's dangerous being a Reaper? I mean, these guys, they never touch the floor. Do you think when they get back home to the barracks, at some point they get to take the jetpack off? Or how does this work? Because I feel like that would be very hot. I don't think fire is the best way to propel somebody forward with a jetpack like this either, man. Now that I think about it, there's gotta be a better way to provide somebody to lift up like that. Anyways, sorry, I can talk about the Reaper jetpacks for ages. Small group of Zorklings have run across the map. Long cast for me as well, guys. I apparently <laughs> missed a bunch of Zorklings sneaking around. Three SCVs for six Zorklings there. I mean, two, of course, killed by the Reaper. Not a bad beginning right there by Dark, but you gotta keep in mind that he's also gonna have to remake a bunch of those links now in a moment. And it turns out that six Zerk links, well, could be three drones. And three drones could be three SCVs. And ultimately, yeah, there we go. It is not really that big of a loss right there at all for Clem. 
Identical opener once again here for the Frenchman. So triple CC together with a little bit of Hellion and then a little bit of Benchy play as well. Boom. Nice. If I didn't say boom, she wouldn't have injected. Fun fact, that's how Terran versus Zerk works. Okay, so we start up the dance again. Dark's dancing with the Queens. Clem's dancing with the Hellions as well as the Benchies. Are we gonna go for a second one? I would imagine so, because we did go for the cloaking upgrade. Maybe not. Okay, now he does start up the second one. Rallied on top of the first. Yeah, it's not a very exciting early game to play right here, right? Or at least to watch, but... I can't fault Clem for doing it. This is just the safest way to force the game to go on for a bit longer, assuming you micro your units well. And it's pretty clear that Clem generally wins most of his games playing that mid-game very well, but I think he's actually been outmaneuvered in some of these games for sure. Maybe not in the... Um, hmm. I, liked, I liked the early game for Dark a lot in game number one, so ultimately that allowed him to play that mid game a little bit more sloppily. Game number three though? I mean, brilliant stuff right there by Dark, right? Making that decision to suddenly go on the offensive and deal so much damage on the other side of the map. Really well done. I think Clem is looking at that though, and he's like, yo, what I should have done is just leave a few more units home for the base defense, and I would have never been in that spot in the first place. I should have never had those Bane Links connecting my mineral line, you know? It's the little things that add up over time, and... Yeah, the momentum was heavily in his favor, but then suddenly he lost all of it. Big Zircon counterattack once again. Dark now doing dark things. He decides to play that very messy style of his. I don't think it's working out all that well for him so far, to be honest. Getting a bit of damage done, but nothing all too crazy. Now, even going for the forward fourth. All right, six and a half minutes or so on this lair. There's a macro hatchery coming up too. We're already up to 71 drones here. There's the bailing nest. We'll be going into bailing speed here momentarily. The thing is though that this bailing speed is gonna be quite a bit later than your conventional bailing speed would be because of the timing of that lair and because of the fact that you decided to go double upgrades first. So instead I think we're gonna be doing some burrowed baneling play. Yeah, not a bad choice. Clem certainly has a shot though when he first moves across the map. Because I do think he can hit a timing window where his opponent will have upgrades done. So the 1-1 one, one Evo upgrades, but not baneling speed just yet. And I think baneling speed is a hell of a lot more scary for Terran than the 1-1 one, one upgrades. Ultimately, though, the 1-1 upgrades do lead towards a longer game, usually, where the Zerk will find themselves with an upgrade lead for longer. Benchy's here getting three kills right now in total. Stimpak and Combat Shields are, well, gonna finish up here very soon. Stimpak is already done. And 1-1 one, one upgrades are lined up as well. Okay, let's see. How much damage can Clem do with this upcoming attack right now? Look at Bangling speed. Only just, like, 10% of the way done. I wonder if drop play here is the best move. I think he probably could go for a big attack, but also a bit scary, I suppose. Drilling Claws coming up once again, so it's double factory here on the back of this. Fourth Command Center coming up together with additional barracks production. Basically the same thing what Clem was doing in the previous game. Okay, he's on point now. Dealing some damage here and there, not really losing a lot of troops. Now he wants to start piling on the pressure in multiple areas at the same time. This is also where things can go horribly wrong for Terrans, because obviously they can suddenly be overwhelmed. It's very easy to accidentally have a bunch of Banelings roll in, and Centrifugal Hooks is finishing up right now in just five seconds time. Okay, this will be spotted though. Nice targeting there as well. Sorry about that one, Jimmy. And Mark. No, Jimmy and Mark were both there. But good target firing right there by Clem for sure. Dark does seem to stabilize on both fronts, but not without taking a significant amount of damage as well. Ultimately though, this now does lead to watch that upgrade lead right here for Dark, right? So Dark right now ahead when it comes to 2-2 upgrades compared to the Terrans. 
This is different than what we saw earlier on in this particular series. I don't know if this is enough Terran here either, although... Looks like Zork decides to run away for at least a little bit. Okay. This is what he was looking for. This is the type of damage he was looking for. Yeah, you blink twice and eight workers go down. Lovely work. Hatchery over here is gonna get denied as well. In the meantime, we do have a little bit of a counter-attack too, and apparently, I think five SCVs here must have gotten killed by Banelings. A lot of low HP workers, but nothing all too crazy there. Okay, picking up once again. Army over here, reactivating Stimpak, getting another drone. And look at the supply count again. Like, this is what happens every time Clem gets to play a game like this. It doesn't really look that great for him, but like, he's macroing incredibly well. And then suddenly he finds himself with a lead. So Dark, once again, tries to go for a big, big counterattack. Those Banelings waiting until that supply depot uh, goes down, maybe? I don't really know exactly. Okay, they decide to kill it here in the end. 12 SCVs have gone down as well. Burrowed Baneling over there in the mineral line. Very dangerous, but 12 SCVs at the expense of basically the entire Zerk army. We have more burrowed banelings right here on the high ground. Ultra Cavern coming up. 3-3 three, three upgrades here as well coming here for Zerk. The drop over here has been relentless for several minutes already. It looks like the spore crawlers are now set up to try and finally push back these uh, these Metavex once and for all. Bit of a minefield over here. Double detonation. One of those, though, dealt some friendly fire, but at least got rid of most of those links. Clem now suddenly finds himself with a 40 supply lead. A couple queens in the main base of the Zerk have gone down as well. Yeah, Dark trying to create chaos, and what worked out brilliantly for him in the previous game, I mean, it's worked out decently well here too. It's just that he took a ton of damage as well in the process. Wow, Dark decides that he is not gonna want to stick in this game, and he taps out. That is certainly an early GG though, we already saw one of those earlier as well. Now he does it again. Okay! So, that takes us to game number five in what has been an epic best of five series. Standard openers, once again from both players. Clem going into triple CC. I wouldn't be surprised at all. We'll have to see if he decides to add another one into the mix after the factory is done. Drone is hiding over here on the left side of the map as well at the nine o'clock position. So, Dark is gonna be able to sneak out a third base relatively easily. There it is. Reaper is going to continue its harassment. So far, no kills yet. Okay. Nicely done right there by Dark. He did make six links. Overlord here at home in the meantime in a little bit of trouble. There's the third command center. There's once again that Hellion shenanigans coming up here very soon. Now, what exactly could Dark do to mix things up? Well, the problem is... Most of the early game aggression for Zerg has one glaring obvious issue, and that is that there is no proper anti-air that can be used offensively. So as long as Clem is showing these Benchy openers, I mean, there are all-ins you could go for, but it's very risky. It is just not very reliable, for example, for him to go for like a Ling Bane bust or a Roach Ravager push. Now that was nice. Getting one of those Creep Tumor kills is not a bad beginning whatsoever. But it's, it's, yeah, it's it's difficult right here for Dark to get much damage done. And I don't think he really needs to get damage done either. So even though he's somebody who likes to mix it up a little bit, I mean, he did so in the previous game by playing far more aggressively earlier on than he did in the previous matches before that, I still don't think it's an optimal way to play it. So we'll probably see something a little more orthodox here as well from the Zerk, just trying to drone up. First larva here could have been a drone. Clem knows this, but not going to happen. Apparently Dark, on purpose, made his very first Overlord there, and it turns out there's not a whole lot you can do against that. There's the Lair coming up at a much more conventional time. Second, third, and fourth gas. Coming up here for Dark. Bailing this, I guess, to get it with a Spire? I'm not exactly sure what this drone is trying to do. I think it's gonna turn... Ooh, no, 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 no. It's a Roach Warren to... Okay. 
So, I was talking about it. There's only so many all-ins you can do, and all of them are risky. Well, Dark is gonna go for a risky game. He decides to go for Overlord Speed, together with a Roach Warren as well as a Lair. I think the plan is for him to go for a Roach Queen drop on the other side of the map. How many Queens are we currently on? We have got six. I would not mind seeing a couple more added into the mix. At the very least, to replace the ones that are likely going to be flying across the map here momentarily. Yeah, there's a Dropper Lord coming. Ooh, don't don't shoot it. Hello. That was a misclick. Um, anyways, I, I, yeah, no. Clem sees this, though. Clem is, is hunting for drones right now, but he sees that there's no drones over here, and immediately everything is getting, getting sent back home. Scan over here does not review exactly what's going on, but he sees the additional gases. All right. Apparently, all of the Terran units right now are making a beeline back home. I think he did see this Dropper Lord that is now currently moving across the map. Dark only at 41 workers. This is a triple CC start right here for Clem as well. So as long as he holds on without losing like 40 SCVs, I think he's going to be in a playable spot. Nice little bit of pickup control over here, of course. Trying his best to put down a tumor, but not happening so far. Okay, we have another Dropper Lord here. Uh, try to pick up those units. I mean, that's not really gonna achieve all too much. We're gonna need an Overseer. There's the Overseer coming up. Clem sees this happening, though. This is obviously a lot of moving parts here for the Zerg, whereas it's really only one little control group here for Clem, so it's a bit trickier for him to control this. But ultimately, what Clem is trying to do here is buy time, and that he has managed. Stimpak is now only a little while away from finishing. There's a Siege Tank out as well. Bunker has finished up. I wouldn't even mind seeing a second bunker, but I think, yeah, time is of the essence here, right? And he probably could only get that much damage bought, or that much time bought, rather, here. Okay, Stimpak, I mean, you ideally want to wait, right? But look at this control here from Mr. Clem. Stutter stepping through the corrosive biles. Lovely work right there by the Frenchman, and he deflects this fight with absolute ease. Okay. He only- he didn't lose a single marine. He only lost a bunch of supply depots and a few Hellions in that bunker. That is it. Dark's gonna, okay, do some Queen Harass. I'm sure Clem is terrified of that. I mean, this is annoying, of course. This kind of reminds me a little bit of that, uh... <laughs> this is so silly. Of that Eric opener we saw like half a year ago. <sighs> but what was a very committed push right there from Dark ultimately got deflected pretty easily. Luckily for him, he does still have that larva mechanic, so he decides to now just pump out as many drones as possible. But I think Clem just gave us a masterclass as to why we normally don't see a ton of aggression from Zergs in the early mid-game of a match of StarCraft 2. It's just not that great of a choice. There are build orders, but against world-class Terrans, they just get shut down pretty hard. Okay, so, 1-1 one, one upgrades together with Infestors. Terran just continuing this as per usual. Arbory is late, so that's a little unfortunate. I would have loved to see him go straight into the 2-2 research, but... I'm not even really sure if he needs it. The main thing here, though, that Clem has to watch out for is Infestors, because those Infestors are gonna be really early. Compared to a regular game of StarCraft, especially after this start, there's a good chance that suddenly, boop, we're gonna see one massive fungal growth. And this is still going to be a disaster here for the Frenchman. Always scanning ahead. Did he see that infester right there in that scan? Okay, he must have noticed him now. First fungal growth, not getting anything. I'm not sure if I like Clem camping out here in the middle of the map. I think going home is the right choice. Yeah. Pick him up, pick him up. Ooh, okay. Not enough biles, I guess, to properly even attempt this, although he could have done so. He does have three. It takes three Ravagers to bile down a... But he didn't have enough to really, like, you know, counter any sort of splitting that the Terran player would probably be going for. Still would have been nice to see him attempt it. In the meantime, we've had some creep over here on the right side of the map, too. Benshi's going back in for more. These two, I mean, you can see how much value they provide, right? Against the plethora of, of Zerk openers. 
Ah, this is a disaster for Dirk. This is so much damage that he's now taking. Like, he's already been scraping the bottom of the barrel, and now, yeah, he, he's, he's basically broke. He fires up as many drones as he possibly can right now, but that's ultimately gonna make all of these attacks very, very scary. Now, I say that, these 2-2 two, two upgrades are like a full minute late right here for Clem. Looks like we did have a big fungal here in the end, but not enough follow-up. Yeah, I, um... I don't love it. I don't love it right here for Clem. It's probably about 4.30 now, by the time he's playing this game. So maybe that's also not quite the optimal time to play. But 2-2 is certainly much later than it should be. And you can see Dark is a, is a very scary man. He doesn't have a big army, but he's doing good enough. No hive or anything just yet, though, which is really nice to note here for the Terran. So no vipers or anything to worry about yet. That means that those siege tanks, assuming they are in the right position, can get a ton of damage done. They're gonna have to go around the watchtower, though. I don't think you can fight this off creep. Fungal growth? Ooh, okay. Bowels first and then a fungal. That's an interesting one to me. Usually we see the fungal first and then the bowels, but... The siege tanks here are gonna be terrifying. Yep, and that's exactly why Dark is trying to get the jump on this. Gets one of the tanks before it even fires a single shot, I believe. Okay. Yeah, this was supposed to be an attack with 2-2 upgrades. I think it would have been a killer move. And it may still be a killer move, to be honest. If he did have 2-2. Now it's just a little bit more difficult, because those units aren't quite as tanky. Not quite as powerful. The Roach army is growing, though. Reinforcing siege tanks are being boosted to watch the other side of the map, and... Clem is slowly trying to suffocate his opponent now. Oh, big fungals, but also massive siege tank shots. I mean, that was actually not that big of a fungal. That was kind of a small fungal, actually. Correction. Two more siege tanks have just arrived. I mean, the infestors are scary here for Clem, and he needs to respect them. But as long as he keeps them at bay over there, yeah, he sees them. He can make very risky decisions like the ones that he's making right now. This can go wrong really easily, though. I wouldn't mind seeing some of those siege tanks maybe inching closer over there. Okay, he decides to go around the corner right now. Siege tanks apparently. Oh, beautiful. Dorsing those balls, but siege tanks mostly zoning away those infestors. There's a lot more bio available, and, and Dark realizes it here. It's Clem who obtains the victory in a very epic, but also a very long best of five series. 3 to 2. Hey, if you made it all the way until the end of this video, please take the second to hit the like button down below. It really does help. Thank you!